Welcome again to the lectures on language theory. This is the second lecture within this course. And it is devoted to the first module, that is, theoretical phonetics. I will remind you that these lectures are delivered specially for the students of the Department of English and German Languages, whose speciality is foreign language to foreign languages. The theme of this lecture is word stress in English. The outline of the lecture covers the following points. Nature of word stress, types of word stress, degrees of word stress. Then we'll consider placement of word stress and we finish the lecture with the functions of word stress. First of all, we'll discuss in more detail nature of word stress. The sequence of syllables in the word is not pronounced identically. Some syllables are more prominent than the others. They are called stressed syllables. Therefore, Stress is a greater degree of prominence of a syllable or syllables as compared to the other syllables of the word. A particular combination of varying prominence of syllables in a word forms, forms its stress pattern. Stress is defined differently by different scientists. For instance, Bogorodetsky defines stress as an increase of energy accompanied by an increase of expiratory and articulatory activity. Jones defines stress as the degree of force, which is accompanied by a strong force of exhalation and gives an impression of loudness. Sweet also stated that stress is connected with the force of breath. Jimson admits that a more prominent syllable is accompanied by pitch changes in the voice, quality, and quantity of the stressed sounds. The nature of the word stress can be studied from the point of view of production and perception. The two are obviously closely related, but are not, but are not identical. The production of stressed syllables requires more muscular energy. Greater muscular effort and muscular activity produce higher subglottal pressure and an increase in the amount of air expelled from the lungs. On the acoustic level, this extra articulatory activity leads to the increase of intensity, duration, and fundamental frequency of the stressed syllable. On the perception level, it corresponds to the increase of loudness, length, and pitch. The effect of prominence of the stressed syllable is achieved by a number of phonetic parameters, such as pitch, loudness, or force of utterance, length, vowel quality, or their combination. As a result, there appears a contrast between stressed and unstressed syllables. If to compare stressed and unstressed syllables in the words contract and to contract, one may note that in the stressed syllable, the force of utterance is greater, which is connected with more energetic articulation. The pitch of the voice is higher, which is connected with stronger tenseness of the vocal cords and the walls of resonance cavity. The quantity of the vowel E eh, in contract is greater, the vowel becomes longer. Now we'll consider types of word stress. The balance of the components of word stress may be different in different languages, so we can distinguish different types of word stress. If special prominence in a stressed syllable or syllables is achieved by greater force with which the syllable is pronounced, such type of stress is called dynamic or force stress. 
European languages such as English, German, French, Russian have dynamic word stress. If special prominence in a stressed syllable is achieved mainly through the change of pitch or musical tone, such type of stress is called musical or tonic stress. It is characteristic of the Japanese, Korean, and other Oriental languages. If special prominence in a stressed syllable is achieved through the changes in the quantity of the vowels, which are longer in the stressed syllables than in the unstressed ones, such type of stress is called quantitative. Qualitative type of stress is achieved through the changes in the quality of the vowel and stress. English word stress is traditionally defined as dynamic, but in fact, the special prominence of the stressed syllables is manifested in the English language not only through the increase of intensity, but also through the changes in the vowel quantity, consonant and vowel quality, and pitch of the voice. Russian word stress is not only dynamic, but mostly quantitative and qualitative. All English vowels may occur in stressed syllables. The only exception is e, eh, which is never stressed. English vowels e, u, o tend to occur in unstressed syllables. Syllables with the syllabic l, m, n are never stressed. Unstressed diphthongs may partially lose their glide quality. Now we'll discuss degrees of word stress. The syllables in a word are characterized by different degrees of prominence. Objectively, there are as many degrees of stress in a word as there are syllables. Stress is distributed through the word. In English, Three degrees of stress are generally distinguished, primary or strong main and principal, secondary, half-strong or half-stressed, and weak, unstressed. American phoneticians distinguish four contrastive degrees of word stress, primary, secondary, tertiary, and weak. Tertiary stress does not show much difference from secondary stress, but it has a different placement in a word. It is generally associated with American English, where it marks the last but one syllable in the words with suffixes ary, ori, oni, revolutionary, dictionary. However, in terms of teaching English as a foreign language, the British concep conception of three degrees of word stress is more acceptable. Stress is indicated in transcription by placing the stress mark before the symbol of the first sound of the stressed syllable. Primary stress is marked by a raised short vertical stroke and secondary stress is marked by a lowered one. For example, examination. Most English scientists do not mark monosyllabic words. According to its placement in a word, stress can be fixed and free. In languages with a fixed stress, the position of the word stress is always the same. It is restricted to a particular syllable in a multisyllabic word. For example, in French, word stress is normally fixed on the last syllable of the word. In Finnish and Czech, it falls on the first syllable. In Polish, it falls on the last but one syllable. In languages with a free stress, its location is not confined to a specific position. It can fall on any syllable of the word. The number of languages with free word stress is relatively small. English, Russian, Italian, Greek, Spanish, and some others. In English, as well as in Russian, the word stress is not only free, but it is also shifting which means that it can change its position in different forms of the word and its derivatives. For example, music, the first syllable is stressed, but musician, the second syllable is stressed.
To define the position of word stress in each individual word, it is necessary to take into account a number of factors. Phonological structure of the syllables, the number of syllables in the word, morphological factor, whether the, the word is simple, complex, or compound, the part of speech the word belongs to, noun, verb, adjective, etc. And to conclude, we'll talk about functions of word stress. Word stress performs the following functions. It organizes the syllables into a word. It creates a particular pattern of relationships among syllables, making some syllables more prominent than others and shapes the word as a whole. Thus, word stress performs the constitutive function. Word stress makes it possible for the listener to identify a succession of syllables with a definite recurrent stress pattern as a word. In other words, it helps us to recognize the word in the chain of speech. This function is called recognitive or identif identificatory. Word stress is capable of differentiating the meaning of words or their forms thus performing its distinctive function. Primary stress placement can distinguish the grammatical category of the word in their position. For instance, import, import. The meaning of the word, below, below. Compound nouns from free word combinations. For example, greenhouse and greenhouse. Here you are offered to answer a set of comprehension questions. And as a rule, uh, here you can find the list of sources for your further reading. Thank you for attention. The lecture is over.